the job done. Yeah, I'm just going to base it off the fact that he's coming into this with a victory. And for and many other sports, you know, winning breeds confidence. And I just feel like pool players, as we've seen with Sanchez Ruiz, they can sort of go on one. Things seem to happen. The game seems to look easier when you've won a tournament. And of course, he's yet to do it on this matchroom stage, the event where we are here, Phil, you know, doing comms and it's the full production. So he's far too good of a player not to win one of these one day. So that's my pick. Well, for what it's worth, which is nothing, I'm going to pick and go out on a limb and say the defending champion, Joshua Filler. Well, how about that for a lag ball, Phil? Look at that. Jack Zowski wins the lag. And David Alcady watching with great interest. He judged that one absolutely to perfection. OK. Snooker superstar, very talented lefty, Jack Lazowski with his first ever break. Now this is the fun part. This is where we were having a little bit of fun last night with Jack. Didn't really know what was going on. Trying to just explain, just think of it as the shot after the break. You can play or push. So now let's see if he remembers to tell his opponent to push. Now he's playing the push. <laughs> he's just making sure he can do. This is how much of a, a novice he is. seen Dan play the, the game of nine ball and I'm sure we'll get a little idea of the level he plays at well, oh, how about this for him? Oh, no. do we have a new favourite for the event Phil well if he carries on like that it's going to be a case of Dan the man wow not many would have took that on a hole they even potted it if they had it done in the event the crowd will be Reenacting that Alan Partridge scene. Dan, Dan. Not so much there, though. Just didn't get the cue ball out enough. Yeah, that's the beauty of nine ball pool. It's all right playing one or two good shots, but you've got to clear the rack, haven't you? How many times have we run the table and missed the, the nine ball? He's the wrong side of this ball. Cue ball's going away from the pink force. He's got to play this hard. Didn't play the pot. Decided he couldn't get back on the pink ball. Now, this is interesting. Obviously, we know these snooker boys, great curious, great potters. But we do see them missing balls on the pool table. Didn't play the pot. Played the hook. That's OK. I think the prime example of snooker players struggling in nine ball was last year at the World Cup. The tie pairing, well, they were all over the place. Tepchai Anu and Nopon Sankar were missing balls you wouldn't believe. Yeah, I was looking at Jack after that shot. I'm sure he held his hand up. If he did, that means he went for the pot. Well, this is just horrible. This is, unless he can get to that top rail, if he can just find a piece of the top rail, he may have to play it with a little bit of white and English. Yeah, oh, he's actually okay. He's got to make sure he doesn't hit the green six first, of course. That's the danger. He needs this to travel, wants this to sit on the bottom rail, so Jack can't play the pot. Yep, that's okay as well. Big crowd around the table, Phil. Yeah, I think it's the novelty factor, isn't it, with Lazowski? But he was always going to get that hook because with the three balls down the, the spine of the table, that was a big target to hide behind. Didn't really need any great tactical knowledge to know what to do there.
jump cue is out. If you can see the potting angle and he does pot it, got to get the cue ball certainly coming over to the left side of the table just so you can see a piece of the pink board ball. He'll be enjoying this though, Dan, won't he? You know, he's entered the UK Open as a complete unknown. Loves the game of pool. Drawing Jack Lazarus, yeah. This is what can happen when you enter these open events. I mean, look at Sufi at the World Championships. Just come from nowhere and lost in the final. He's such a smooth cueist, isn't he, Lazarski? Aesthetically pleasing. And he called that three ball very thin as intended and again getting his opponent in trouble also in trouble on table two Mohamed Daydad from South Africa if you want to watch that match it's available on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel Daydad quickly 4-0 down to Alexander Kazakis He's had a good look at this. Got to hit a rail after contact. That's going to be ball in hand. wonder if Jack knows this, though, because there's no referee. You don't think he knows, does he? Yeah, he doesn't know. That's funny, that. <laughs> that is brilliant. And Dan's not even told him. Maybe Dan doesn't know. Oh, he's just telling him now, look, he didn't hit a rail. I actually said to Jack yesterday, I said, you do know after contact you've got to hit a, a cushion. And he was like, right, okay. And I said, have you played in the snooker shootout? Just think of it a little bit like that. Good analogy, actually, and very sporting from Dan, sir. Well done, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's looking at the three-nine combo, but there's no need to be attempting that. Just pop the balls, they're all in open play. Yeah, you know, that's more like it. It's actually funny, you know, that some of these snooker players, I just presume that they, they know the rules, really. You know, a lot of the pool players, we, we understand probably 90% of the rules of snooker, but it seems these snooker players <laughs> literally haven't got a clue. And the beauty of nine ball pool, Phil, is the fact that the rules are very simple. You know, they don't change, you know. The game of eight ball, you know, there's about... 50,000 different sets of rules all over the world, but nine ball is just very simple, you know, wherever you go, it's the same rule set. This is not ideal, this is a little tester early on. And it's the miss. When I get the snooker tournaments, the players say, those pockets are massive, how do you ever miss one? Well, Lazowski's suddenly discovered that you can miss one as Trump discovered at the US Open. Yeah, that was another thing. When we walked in the arena yesterday, we walked past one of the tables. Jack looked at the table and said, they, they look tight, them pockets. Are they always this tight? I said, well, it's a funny, funny game, Pool. You think it's easy, but, you know, when you're watching Filler and Sanchez and Shane play, yeah, of course it, it looks easy like anything does, but... Right, this situation, Jack's missed the seven ball. This rack's been going on some time now, and now he's got a kick at this ball. It's not going to be easy to get it safe. Playing off the one rail, trying to put it in the side. A little highlight reel there from Lazowski. That was terrific. That wasn't. Well, Phil, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you've achieved in any Q-sport. Once you start missing balls, you start to feel it. It's as simple as that. Well, this might end up being one of the strangest racks of the tournament. Can Dansu pop this mid-range nine ball to somehow take the opening rack of what is actually a very strange match we're watching ironically i've seen lazowski play frames of snooker quicker than this
But I'll tell you what, folks, he's not missing this nine ball. The opening rack of nine ball pool that Jack Lazowski has played on the international stage has been won by the left-hander, but it wasn't impressive at all, was it? The eight ball missed. He looked as though he was still very much finding his feet. If you're unfamiliar with Jack Lazowski, he's had a very good snooker career and he's a current member of the Elite World's Top 16, well, number 14 at the moment. He's actually been in six world ranking event finals, but he's never won one. He has lost to very good opposition, of course, in all of those finals. He's been in events in the title match in Latvia, China, Scotland, Germany and Gibraltar. Yet to bring home the silverware, though. But just to put into perspective where he stands in the world of snooker, he's got to the quarterfinals of 25 world ranking tournaments. Well, this is a smash and grab. Second rack he's ever played, and he gets a golden break. He can't hide his embarrassment. All of those players dreaming of a golden break. And he does it at the second time of, has of asking. Look at that. Nudged right into the pocket without touching the sides. Phil, it's just incredible. I spent three hours with Lazowski last night. Didn't even get close to a golden break. Second break of his match, the nine flies in. You just cannot script this. I think he's really enjoying himself, and quite rightly so. Now, he saw a large number of a golden breaks during the recent Whirlpool Masters. Not two in succession this time, though. And in fact, after that break, nothing doing. Again, this is the opening round on day one here at the UK Open at the Copper Box Arena in London. This is the second year we've been here. Joshua Filler is the defending champion. And if this match that we're watching now, Lazowski versus Sue, keeps on going, and Jack heads through to the next round, it's going to be interesting to see who, who we will meet, Phil. Do you have the answer to that? I do indeed. It's going to be a very tough one. Steve Higton, or much more likely, Miesko Fatunski, who's just coming off a, a tournament win in Finland. Steve Higton, blast from the past. He was one of the original English nine ball players from back in the day, Phil, when I first started playing many, many moons ago. So good to see him back in the nine ball event. Yeah, and let's just say it's going to be Fatunski. We all know that's going to be a step up and a different level of opponent for Jack, so... Yes, they've actually started. Fatunski and Higton over on table nine. Fatunski winning the first couple of racks. Another big name in action on table four. Maximilian Lechner from Austria. 2-0 up on Tashunka Vitko of Spain. Not the worst of effort there from Dan Soon because it was very, very awkward, but you would think he's going to be in some trouble here just because Jack can get the one ball over to the left near the nine. And he's going to be guaranteed the hook. Doesn't look like there's a gap in between the brown seven and that rail. So he's got to find another path. It's actually quite awkward. Word association here, Carl, talking about Jack Lazowski. James Jack from the UK has won his first match against Tom Stavely, fellow countryman, 9-4. Well, he thinks there's a gap there. Oh. 
only he knows it looked very tight to me this is where the pool player is very smart in these instances and this is where Jack would of course struggle you know he's nowhere near had enough time on a pool table you can learn from a kid you learn from losing you learn from playing better players pretty much like you would have done in the world of snooker I know he's still looking for that elusive big title in snooker film yeah we were talking about this earlier with Jeremy Jones people say I think far too flippantly it's only a matter of time now in terms of ability yes that's the case because he's certainly good enough to win not just a tournament any tournament but you can't say for sure he's going to win one that's the way sport is there's no guarantees is he chasing the nine here this is oh, this is this is madness well there isn't a player in the top 16 that would play that shot and if Jack was not a snooker player and he was a nine ball player it wouldn't take a long time for him to not chase the nine himself in them instances let me tell you you soon get punished for them sort of shots at this level yeah it was a good effort obviously but ill-advised could ask you a question Carl he's got all of the technical attributes he's a great cueist when he's playing well at snooker he makes the the cue ball talk if you were able to coach Jack and be with him on a pool table maybe four or five hours a day playing in tournaments regularly as well how long do you think it would be before he became world-class yeah, good question Phil I suppose for a start it comes down to the person doesn't it? you know how bad does he want it and when you look at Joshua Filler the defending champ still practices day in day out like a maniac and that's why he's of course still at the top and you know clearly one of the favorites to win this event or certainly go deep you fancy him being around that might he'll certainly play a, a part in this event won't he even if it's loses qualification round you know that round where players come through the left side and they have that last match to qualify for the last 16 often one of the top boys if they do get beat it might be that match quite a lot of the times but it's, it's very difficult to to tell really I mean is there a snooker player what's really come across and decided that snooker's not really working for them so they're gonna play pool it definitely wouldn't be days or weeks probably not months I think you need a good couple of years yeah you've got to play in all the events you've got to go through the pain and you, you, you've got to be you know you've got to learn from them mistakes them them shots that you've played and thought well that's not worked out and there's a lot more to the game than people realize that was one of the remarkable things about Alison Fisher she made the acclimatization from snooker to nine ball pool and dominated the female game didn't she after just a, a few months well yeah but I think the ladies game wasn't really strong Phil I mean you know when you look at Alison and Kelly Fisher they still play nine ball a little bit like snooker they, they play a lot of stun shots they play the game that way as well if you look at an out and out nine ball pool player you know obviously I, I've always sort of grown up call it American pool but you know, you know, when you watch Shane Van Bowen play, they play the cue ball, they let the cue ball do the work. And that's something that is not going to be in Jack's armory because he's used to stunning the cue ball around the table. Yes, and when he plays snooker, he doesn't really have to think that deeply about how to play. Obviously, he has to think about the, the shot selections. When it comes to this game, the mind is working overtime okay well we, we've seen Jack's attempt at the jump shot his first jump shot of the match he missed the ball Dan Sue had ball in hand he's decided to play for the combo but this is a little bit it's not a messy messy table but if you're not really familiar with the game it, it kind of looks messy but it actually really isn't anyway he's going for the combination for his first rack
You heard the groan from the crowd, but I think the nine ball has come to obscure the two. This is where the pool player would thrive in a match like this. Yeah, that's not the worst of efforts, is it? It's actually quite a strange match for me to commentate on this, Phil. Finding it hard to uh, to understand what's going on because you're so used to watching like the top boys and you, you know they you play the game right. And you can see what's going on. But obviously, we're, we're in this situation. It's hard to call any shot really because they're going to play their own game. Yeah, to put it diplomatically, the patterns are entirely unconventional. We've seen the big names shine here, though, in the opening round. Carlo Biardo with a 9-0 win. Good to see Biardo back. Yeah, we're two hours into the start of the tournament and not a, an upset in sight. Oh, that does Dan Sir no favours. Good to see him smiling though, you might as well enjoy this match. It's not every day you, you rock up at the copper box and play Jack Lazowski at nine ball. Now normally you wouldn't want to put the white there with ball in hand, but he's got no option. In terms of potting the two. Yeah, I think the two will just go through the gap. So I think it will pot. And all he's doing is getting the right angle to follow the cue ball up the table. He's played it into the seven. Maybe it was tight. So, yet again, we are seeing another snooker player in a big open event where they just the physics of the game are catching them out. You love it. You love it, Carl. Yeah, I mean, I understand exactly what the game's about. I understand where, you know, over the years you've seen these people comment on social media and things like that where they just think sneaker players would come to a pool tournament and win it, but it's just not really the case. This is turning into a bit of a, a, bit of a car crash match, this Phil, it's fair to say. I think if Lazowski sees Dan Sir continuing to miss all and sundry, the early nerves will disappear and he'll start to let the cue go. And then we'll see his true colours. Sir has had a terrible start. Yeah, Jack will know, won't he? Well, I was going to say, Jack will know his opponent. He's not going to threaten him today, but Jack just can't seem to pot a ball at the minute. And you see, that was a, a snooker shot, wasn't it? Didn't need to get perfectly on the four. I thought you meant because it was a red ball, Phil. Wow, this is, this is, someone needs to turn the light off on this table, Phil. Can we flick over to table two? Watch Kazakis. This is, this is incredible. It's a nice shot, a little stone run through, play the hook. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It's that old commentary cliche call. It's a comedy of errors, but no one's laughing. I'll tell you who is laughing, certainly smiling. Nick Malai from Greece, who's beaten Jonas Kornmesser 9 6 in round one. Over on table 26. Yeah, also on table six, good to see Shang Zhong Lin back. At the big majors, 9-1 win over Sam Story. I'm sure he will also play a big part as the week unfolds. Class, class player. Now, Jack, can we get on the four ball? Can we run a few balls? Mm. 
this is just a situation where you feel like any you know a, any q sport qist is going to be able to pop the balls and, and, and kind of navigate their way around the table switching it up plays okay with the right hand doesn't he but well he does but not as well as he should do he's cost himself many a rack many a frame and indeed many a match by playing right-handed i'm a big critic of him playing right-handed in snooker actually he says he prefers that to using the rest well be that as it may let's put it this way he's not as good right-handed nowhere near as ronnie o'sullivan is left-handed Yeah, he didn't get on the seven, did he? No in there, so... When he plays right-handed, he doesn't look all that stable to me. Good win for Welshman Marcel Price. He's beaten Dimitris Siampanis of Greece, 9-3. Nieska Fatunski 4-0 up now on Steve Higton. Dave Snell, he's 4-0 up on Adam Humphreys. Max Lechner 4-0 up on Tashunka Vitko. And Torsten Homan going great guns against Mehmet Bosdemir. 5-0 ahead, Torsten. in the glare in front of the cameras Dan Sir is melting yeah I mean this I wouldn't even advise taking the pot on there that was completely the wrong shot you know if you're watching and thinking oh well he's missed a, a, a kind of toughish long ball got to be patient in the game of pool he could have played a good safety shot there both players I've obviously missed a lot of balls so far, so. Anyway, it's three racks to zero for Jack Lazowski. One of the most entertaining players in snooker to watch, and let's hope he brings that to the pool table. Now, talking about entertaining players, over on table six, in no time, this year's World Nine Ball Championship runner-up, from Syria, Mohamed Sufi, in no time, beat Jay Harrison 9-0. Let's hope Sufi has a, a deep run here because watching him play is a joy. So many Greeks in town for this event, including a good friend of yours, Carl, Nikos Economopoulos. 6-1 up on Mark Ingram. And Sharik Sayed, who will represent Singapore in the forthcoming World Cup, finds himself 5-1 up on Leonis Charloftis, another Greek. One more score to give you. Alexa Pashelsh, a coming force, up-and-coming player. He leads Ross Cable, 7-0. The break was always going to be a key part of this match. When Judd Trump played, the one ball was on the spot and the wing ball is guaranteed when you play that break rule. Since then, the break rule has been changed. The break is a lot tougher now. It's not easy to keep making the one in the side. And this is a horrible shot for Dan Sue. It's a little thin one up the rail. horrible then when you sat behind them and you're playing the shot you, you know you've got to take it on but they just always seem so brutal now can Jack who he knows his opponent is not going to give him much trouble can he just find his range a little bit as I say that he just loses the cue ball a bit doesn't he Phil now he's like the cue ball's coming away cue ball's running up towards the top
Another ball missed. Yeah, people, you know, all these events for people said to me, oh, do you not fancy getting your cue back out? Well, this is what will happen to me. If you don't put effort in and practice at any game, sport, this is what can happen. The cue ball, you know, he always lands in a funny position. Then you're chasing the next shot. You end up missing balls. And when you miss balls, that's when it becomes difficult. And call without being patronising when you've been to the pinnacle of the game, which you have been, and then you try and come back after a while off. It's very difficult to accept mediocrity. Yeah, the first rack, Dan Su, when he missed a nine ball, you just feel like if he could have potted that, it's actually his shot. I don't know why he sat back down. Maybe he doesn't know the ball's gone in. Yeah, I don't think he saw the five go in. Yeah, obviously, if you hit the lowest ball on the table and make another ball, you stay at the table. He will know that. I think he just thought it stayed over the pocket, but it did fall. So, Lazowski not aware he had ball in hand. Dan Sir not aware he knocked a, a ball in. It's all happening, apart from quality. <laughs> That's not happening yet. It would be nice to see Dan win a rap, though. You know, he missed the nine in the opener. You, you, don't, you know, you don't want him to play a match like this and not win a rack. Of course you don't. He will get chances now. Can Jack see the edge? I don't think he can. We're going to see another jump shot. At least he's trying the jump shot, though. That's kind of cool. Well, you said it was nice if we could see Dan Sir win a rack. Be nice to see Mohamed Day that win one against Alexander Kazakis, but it doesn't look likely. He's 8 0 down on table two. Now, where this cue ball goes, no one knows. That's okay. Dan Su's got a chance. Can he finally get off the board? Two jump shots Jack's played. He's got the ball over the object ball. Need the cue ball to keep rolling. Oh, I think he's hooked behind the nine. I think he's hooked behind the nine. Yeah, I mean, he could have left the cue ball further to the right there, Dan, and found that gap. The fact that he, I think he was trying that, but the fact that he overrun it and the cue ball bounced, hooked behind the nine. Kicking behind this pink four, trying to put in the left centre could be a good option. If you miss that and get close, four ball's going to find the bottom rail. got to protect the four ball in this instance because if you don't you leave a pot now this is a little bit like that blue two Dan missed earlier it's one of them little thin ones I feel this is probably a little bit easier than that other ball he missed come on Dan you can win a rack that's all we want caught the rail Jack can go rail first here popped the pink four yeah not a great amount of room but there is just enough he all needs to slow down because of the nine ball it's amazing isn't it it's amazing where it can go Jack will have felt like he can't fail to land on the Six ball there. Well, he's acting as though he's thinking about the jump shot. I think you need to be Stretch Armstrong to play that. Like 
a particularly tall basketball player might have trouble reaching the jump. Yeah, I think he's going to play it right-handed, isn't he? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, he's going to switch hands. Got to try and it's on the right-hand side of the six. It's the long rail. Well, he's going back up top. Pool player would play these two rails. He's going one rail. Trying to pot it, of course. Well, he made one earlier, and he's made another. Two from two, kicking one rail. Here's another look, look at that, straight on the pot now, incredible. And then the seven goes astray, it wasn't easy, said Dan's uh, supporters. Giving him encouragement, come on Dan, they say. Yeah, all the people watching want Dan to win a rack, we want you to win a rack as well. This is the biggest chance you may get as well, yeah, he's okay, he's on the eight. Looked at the potting angle, just didn't hit it thin enough. What a shame. What a shame. The only solace there, he has left the, the cue ball a little close to the side cushion. But for Jack Lazowski, it's again a case of picking up the pieces. He's not playing well in any way, shape or form, but he is playing decidedly better than his opponent. Jack Lazowski leads Dan Sir by four acts to zero. And that hurts. Well, it's going to get tough out there for him now because he could have won two racks, missing two nine balls. And of course, the more racks that Jack Lazowski gets on the board, the more his natural talent, which is considerable, will come to the surface. I can tell you, Kevin Lenoy and Walter Lakra have gone to the hill on table 16. Eight racks each. Petunski's five racks to zero up over Steve Ipton. The winner of that match will play the winner of this one. Made the one ball on the break. At least he's breaking pretty hard as well, Phil. Often when we see the sneaker players come over and attempt the game of nine ball the power in the break is something they lack because they, st they stand more square on as if the pot in the ball you know your regular nine ball pool player will stand side on and get the body moving through so jack is creating some decent enough power the combination was never gonna be easy doesn't matter who's playing that shot quickly let me tell you about table three Hayato Ishikata from Japan leads Hunter Lombardo 6-0. Oh, and this is turning into a nightmare for Dan. Another big name in action, Mario He from Austria 2-0 up on Adam Lewis. As I said before, if you want shocks, well, there's nothing doing in that regard so far today. Well, that'll work out nicely. That little bump, full ball on the three. Sets Jack up nicely here. He said earlier, very good cueist is Jack. Very easy on the eye. I've always thought that when I've watched him play sneaker. Missing some un uncanny balls here. He didn't really miss a lot of balls last night when we were practicing. They didn't, which they usually don't, but 
Yeah, this is just bizarre. I think in certain snooker matches, he has been definitely the victim of excessive nerves. And I get the impression he's a little nervous today, out of his comfort zone, and you can fully understand that. Yeah, it just builds up when you miss a few balls and then certain positional shots, you're looking at and you second guess yourself. That's all that's happening here. Got to bend the cue ball around the nine. Not to foul ball in hand. You know, just watching where the brown seven was going, to see if it would tie the purple five up, but it hasn't. Well, without wishing to be unkind, if Dan Sir continues to play like this, he will not win a rack. Mohamed Daydat came all the way from South Africa, and he didn't win a rack against Alexander Kazakis. I can tell you over on table two, Kazakis has completed the whitewash at 9-0. Jack, and it was a two rail positional shot, but it's still nice to get where you want to get on the eight. Now, that was a, a nicer sequence from Lazowski. Plenty of mistakes, though, from his rival. Jack Lazowski leads Dan Sir 5 0. Result from table eight. Kim Su Garmak from Norway has beaten Demetrius Tyria Jarvis from Lithuania 9 7. Also a win for the Greek Antonios Kakaris. He beat Evelo Simeonov 9 6. Some of these are new names to me, Carl. I think I'm doing okay. I think you're doing fantastic, Phil. I don't envy you one bit. It's the beauty of nine ball. It's played all over the world. We have players from all kinds of different... Oh, this is a good break. Yeah, obviously the cue ball's gone near the side, but I was looking at the one ball. We know by now that's what players are trying to pot in that side, so the fact that Jack made it is good. Incredible how the cue ball stayed on the table. Look at it there. Unbelievable. Tough pot this though. If he takes it on. Yeah, I don't blame him. That was too nasty for to try and cut in and he's done a good job though. I think that's been the best part of his game so far. When he's had a clear idea of what safety to play, the execution has been okay. One railer, Dan Su can just flick off the top rail, send the cue ball into the two like so. He's going to scratch though, that's a bit unfortunate. Ball in hand again for Jack. Four, the pink four to the purple five is going to be a key shot. That's where things may go wrong. switching up playing this shot with his right hand yeah look technically okay it's functional but it doesn't look as though he's as fluent with that hand as he is with the left nowhere near and then goes back to his normal left hand and makes a, a mess of it I think he actually miscued there, you know, because he was playing to draw the cue ball right back, and the fact that the cue ball didn't is another look. Yeah, it sort of looked like a bit of a miscue. Carl, you always make this point, and I think it really is pertinent to this match. 
the one thing that snooker players can't quite grasp when they come into nine ball pool is how big the balls are yeah well said Phil actually yeah anyone who's only ever watched nine ball I've had it you know over the years I've had friends come around to my house and we've gone in the games room for a few drinks and, and a game of pool before we go out and they've said the same they said I just can't believe how big the actual ball is to put that into context, the, the pool cues, what the, what the players use, range from about... The, the, the thinnest you maybe see from a top player would be 11.8 millimetre, up to 13.5, personal preference. Just about cut that back far enough. Yeah, I like what Jack's doing here. Just get down, try and see the shot and play it. Don't overthink it when you're just putting the balls. Obviously, great cue is so. When it's like that, I think he does right. Just speed up and, and play the game. Yes, we can't overemphasize just what an inspirational cueist Jack Lazowski is. When he plays his best snooker, the other snooker pros are very impressed. That's the best compliment I can give him. And in this match, he's in total control. Yes, he's made his mistakes, but the errors from Dan Sir are piling up. It is 6-0. Carol Skaversky over on table 24, former Whirlpool Masters champion, 3-0 upon Iru Rompainen from Finland. And I can tell you, Torsten Homan has won via whitewash beating Mehmet Bosdemir 9-0 well no nine ball in this time but the the one and the eight disappear Oh, that's more like it, Jack. That's more like it. And the, the red three ball floats down the rail. 7-0 could be imminent. Into a blind pocket, Carl. This was arguably his best pot of the match so far. Yeah, I agree. And to land on the three ball the way he did. Just to come past the pink four is ideal. You can tell he's just picked up his pace a little bit. He knows when, when they're open, just kind of get on with it, play the pot. He's probably a little bit shocked as much as we are, some of the balls he's missed, because you know, you're expecting not, you're not expecting not to miss balls, but certain balls, when they do miss, you think, how sort of Jack's level of acuity missed that ball. Yeah, the game of pool in itself is where he's going to come unstuck. It has to. Even the break, but like you said, Phil, he's actually broke okay, hasn't he, in this match? Yeah, with regard to the competency of his break, I've seen much worse. Look at that, got into the cue ball far too much. Played for the nine into the top left. Yeah, that's just something where in time Jack would land on the nine in the corner. But the nine to the centre, no issue whatsoever. It's entirely one-way traffic. Jack Lazowski leads Dan Sir 7-0. Looks very much as though Lazowski will play Mieszka Fatunski next up because Fatunski is 6-1 upon Steve Hickton. 6-1 also for Dave Snell over Adam Humphreys. Luke Rollison and Leo Bosher, both UK players, have shared the first two racks. Marco Dorenberg from Germany leads Paul Chung, 5-1. Dimitris Lukakis from Greece, he leads George Hogg of the UK, 5-1.
good to see after every rack both players always seem to have a little discussion about something maybe the racking itself at the table dry break one suit at the table quite a tricky one ball in the opening rack if you cash the nine back we need another one it's fairly similar we would have to get the cue ball around the three three rails for a shot on the two in the same pocket there's a gap there and he's tried to play a slow sort of left drag shot Nikos Economopoulos on table seven has made short work of Mark Ingram winning 9-1 Well, Jack Lazowski fires in a full table, long bank. That went in pure as well. Got to be careful here. I think he's fluked the nine, Phil. <laughs> yes, he's fluked the nine in the bottom left. Well, he fluked the two as well, didn't he? But it didn't matter once the nine had gone in. I'll tell you what, though. I like what I'm seeing from Jack Lazowski. He's not pulling up any trees. The standard hasn't been brilliant. But as far as a debut goes... I think it's okay. Well, how on earth has he cut the nine in that corner? The things you see on a 9 5 pool table. Yeah, he was trying to pop the seven. The reason why he hit it hard is because he knew he couldn't roll the two onto the seven because the two wouldn't sort of come out and leave him a shot. So he played it hard to get it out. But, yeah, that was a funny one. What a fluke. What a moment. And there he's having a conflab with his fellow snooker player, Gary Wilson. Just hit the break a little bit full. That's all that's happened there. You've got to kind of hit it. I want to say half ball. It's around that kind of mark. You're stumming it off the side and back into the pack. In fact, the cue ball went straight in this middle. There's a look. Just a little bit too full. And draws it back into that pocket. Dan Sue, time is running out, buddy. We all want you to win the first rack. Can't see it happening. No, I'm afraid not. But I'm sure he has enjoyed his experience, nevertheless, you know, when he entered the UK Open, who would have thought he would have been playing Jack Lazowski in the main arena? Yeah, I think it's one of the cases of get it taped this match, and now he's thinking, erase the tape. Erase because Lazowski's in. Played a good shot too. He's played on the wrong ball, Phil. He's played on the wrong ball. It was the pink four next. He's played on the purple five. I think fortunately he's got the gap. Yeah, he had the gap, but he would have played up the left side of the table, you see. The fact that he went forward with the cue ball meant he was playing on the purple five. Yeah, as I was saying, he played a good shot to develop the two on the three and then a, a mental error. Nice shot there to miss the seven and come back out for a shot on the purple five. Everyone's willing him on, maybe even Lazowski. Yeah, you're probably right there, Phil. He needs to take care of this one. Yep, it's just not happened, does it? I have to say, I think when it comes to main table pool the performance of Dan Sir has been one of the worst I've seen in one of our tournaments there was a gentleman who played Earl Strickland in the US Open a couple of years ago who made a, a string of mistakes also now that's better but where's the cue ball 
that is unfortunate, wasn't it? He played the six bank nicely. Give the pocket every chance. The cue ball just kept going, didn't it? The seven's in. The eight follows, and now the nine. It. You cannot believe it. Come on, Dan, knock this in. Well, we might hear a, a cheer here because there's a few people here to watch Dan. And listen, we want to see him win a rack. Didn't look like it was going to happen. We thought it was going to be no, sir, but it's yes, sir. Dan gets on the board. Jack Lazowski missing the nine. No one expected that, but I think it's a, a nice thing for Dan to, to get that rack. Maybe he took this one too lightly. He will never again, Jack Lazowski, when he's sitting in snooker players rooms watching pool on tv never again will he engage in that conversation with his fellow pros oh it's easy these pockets you can knock them in no problem how can you miss he will never again say that this is the moment dan Su won his first rack of the uk open against professional snooker player jack lazowski good to see guys having a chat there at the table after every rack, they've been having a little meeting there, a little bit of a coffee morning meeting point. I wonder what they're discussing there. <laughs> well, he's such a, a genuinely nice person, Jack Lisowski. I think he would be a, a dream to play. No edge about him whatsoever. Well. Wow. That was a tidy break. He made them on the side. That's the first break we've seen. Here's another look. Yeah, that works okay indeed. I think he can put this kind of, yeah, in the side. He made it. Yeah, so this is not easy though, Phil. This is not easy at all. I don't even know if he can go forward with the cue ball. He's got to get from that red three back down. Kind of where the cue ball is now, a little bit lower for a shot of the pink four. Oh, watch this. This is horrible. Hard stun draw type shot. Yeah, not going to be easy. He's fluked it, but he's no pot on this ball, but he's still at the table. Just been told what our fourth match will be today on the streaming. It will be a round two contest between Carlo Biardo, former US Open champion, and JJ Fall from South Africa. Now, what's the, the link that combines those two players? Well, Carlo Biardo came through this morning with a 9 0 win. And so did JJ Fall. Yeah, JJ Fall, I know him well. He owns a club up in Manchester, Savannah's. Been playing nine ball for a, about a year now. He actually played in this event last year, Phil. And he beat Coping Yi in one of the rounds. So, yeah, Biardo's going to be favourite. But you never know. That could be a little tricky match we've got going there. Oh, again, another miss that no one could possibly foresee. This time it's the five ball undercut. Yes, the JJ4 match against Copenhagen. Sometimes when a 
a lesser known player wins against one of the big names it's because the big name has had a poor performance that wasn't the case against JJ Fall who broke and ran a whole succession of racks so that's match four Biardo against Fall as he fluked it doesn't look like it's got enough pace to reach the pocket no no this is a good cha chance now rather for Jack to put this to bed he can go rail first spin the cue ball over to left oh you could see it okay he had to spin it a little bit in fairness but it was okay Emma Fraser managing director of the world nine ball tour she's having a chat with a few of the players and Shane Van Bonin's Van Bonin's lurking he's, he's up next right Phil SVB he is indeed yes looking forward to that against a, a Finnish player that we don't really know an awful lot about what we do know is that Jack Lazowski can't put this match to bed this time it's the seven ball that goes astray Yeah, it's incredible really a couple of chances he had now to win this match well the fans of Dan Su have come to watch him he's brought a few mates who are there front row just to the the left of the screen that's where we're looking so Dan Su's right hand side they'll get a little bit more noisy Needs to slow down. Needs to slow down. It's thinner than he wanted. And you can see Emily there in the white shirt chatting to Gary Wilson, another snooker player who's playing here this week. He's been playing a lot more pool than Jack, so he's a bit more adapt. Is it there? It is. Second rack for Dan Sue in the Scottish Open final recently a couple of days ago Jason Shaw was 8-2 down to Victor Zielinski 1-10-9 comebacks can happen I think this one would be a miracle if it did but who would have thought that Dan Sir would have had two racks on the board by now when Jack Lazowski was over quite a simple match winning nine ball On table 13, Juan Carlos Exposito and Simon Ayres have just begun. 1-1. One, one. Win Antoine from Vietnam, who's going to represent his country in the World Cup of Pool. Next month, he's 3-0 upon James Oyen Goran. It's a busy arena, I can tell you. I'll tell you what, he's got a good break down soon. It's only the second break we've seen, but he has put it to one on the side. Unfortunately, he's had no love off the break. He can't put the blue to. Looks as though if Jack Lasowski does finally get this done, he will take on Mieszka Fatunski in the next round. Fatunski 8-2 up now on the hill against Steve Hickton. Yeah, Fatunski's also a lefty. That would be a very intriguing matchup indeed for Junski versus Lasowski. But Lasowski's got to get over the line here. He's had a couple of chances just to put this match to bed. His fellow snooker player, David Lilly, who's a multiple English amateur champion who's done well on the, the Pro Tour. Well, he's OK at the moment against Scott Hunter. Lilly leading 3-0, so he's making the crossover. And a win for Max Lechner on table four. The formidable Austrian has beaten Tashunka Vitko 9-2. This is the exact scenario on a pool table where the game is very difficult. The bank shot wasn't on in the corner. And it's you've got to try and like find a safety shot. It's very, very difficult. It's almost like you have to play a percentage game a lot of the time. That's what 
big players do. Oh, this is okay. This will work. This will work nicely. I wonder if he's going to set up a 2-9 combo. If he gets ball in hand. Not really. This is going to be difficult to hit. Tan Sir there made a, a rookie error. He acknowledged he'd had some good luck even before the balls had stopped rolling. And where they did stop, it was obvious he was going to be in trouble. He's, play, he's been played in good spirits, hasn't he? Both players have been laughing and joking and talking to each other. That's been nice to see. If this match proves anything, Phil, it proves that nine ball pool is not an easy game. Like, for some reason, a lot of people think it is because believe me and you, it is not. I've been out there, I've competed for a few years. Obviously, now I'm lucky enough to do the comms and, and see the class that we've got. You know, this is this can be a tough, tough game. It really can. Yeah, and seeing a match like this makes you appreciate just how good the real elite of the sport are. They are magicians. Yeah, and it's the decision making is where they're good as well. It's not just the fact that obviously, you know, they pop the balls, they run the racks, they play good safeties. A lot of the time you have to make clear decisions and when you're under pressure, that's where the decisions can be made wrong. Now this is this the rack. Now it's gonna get Jack's first win here at the UK Open and set up a blockbuster where we think it's going to be Lazowski versus Vachunski in round two. And just landed a little bit straight on the purple five, had to force it in. Now the cue ball's running away. Going to play the cue ball off two, two rails, going to end up hitting this too soft. He's going to scratch, he just can't get the win and rack. This has been insane, this match. Jack Lazowski. There's a chance to put this match to bed, but the cue ball is just letting him down. Just when you think the curtain is going to fall, the match continues. Just going to pull the cue ball back out. Yep. That's all they have to do, centre table, guarantees you this angle. He's going to be feeling good out there, I know he's still losing. But the fact that he thought he was going to lose 9-0 and Jack missed the 9, it looks like he's going to win the next 3. I'll tell you what, Phil, if Dan Two can win 2 more racks and make it 8-5, yeah, if he can win 2 racks after this and make it 8-5, things could get a little bit dicey out there. And you know, this is Jack Lazowski on a snooker table all over. In command, suddenly makes an inexplicable mistake and ends up losing. I'm not saying he's going to lose this one, that would be astounding if he did. But Dan Sir restoring a degree of respectability to the scoreline. He was 8-0 down at his lowest ebb, now it's 8-3. A couple of results to give you from the outside tables, neighbouring tables actually. Alexa Bashel, she has beaten Ross Cable 9-1. And in an all-British affair, Tony Burton overcame Jamie O'Brien 9-3. Yoni Uski from Finland on the hill against Masharif Zana El Abedin from Morocco. 8-1. Gabriel Vasalashi from Romania. 6-0 upon Carl Williams. Christos Papa Georgiou from Greece. 7-6 upon Andre Vansner. And Karol Skaverski. No surprise. 7-0 upon Iru Rompainen. Iru is the father of the much younger Rompainen from Finland, who is a real talent. Cue ball's a little bit too thin this time, that's why the one's not disappeared. SVB's lurking in the distance, he's up next. There have been a few times in this match where Shane's probably walked very close to the arena and maybe found himself walking back because 
Lazowski at the table has had a chance to win this match and put it to bed. Still obviously in a good commanding place in this match, but you just feel like he's got to sort of win one of these next couple of racks, really, because things start to get a little bit silly out there. and You'd be sat in your chair knowing that you should have won. It's another miss. Played it into the rail. This is awkward, though, to get from the blue two that deep in the pocket on this red three. It's a nasty little shot coming up. We're talking, though, about the the differences between snooker and pool, and one of them is you've got to remain intense to the very last shot, i.e. the nine ball. In snooker, if you build a, an unassailable lead through a big break, it doesn't really matter what you do on the colours. If you're so far in front, you can't get caught. With pool, the most important shot is the last shot in every single rag. That wasn't a bad effort, really, to draw the cue ball back through the gap. Be a brave man taking this on. He's got such an easy safety shot. Yeah, he wanted the cue ball near the green six. Jack will hit this ball. He's to hit a rail after contact or pot it. Ball must strike a rail now, which it's going to. But he has left the pot, then so can pot this long three. It's by no means a gimme. But if he pots it, playing ball, he will have a shot on the pink ball. This is what I love about the sport nine ball. I love the fact that he can be down in a match. We've seen it recently, just at the weekend, the final of the Scottish Open, Phil. What about that one? Jason Shaw won 10-9 over Victor Zielinski. Zielinski was 8-2 up in that final. Wow. Them middles are brutal. I thought that was going to fall. The fact that he didn't. Here's a look. How does this not fall, Phil? Look at this. Well, that's the only good thing about the miserly middle pockets, as you call them. It's difficult for the for the cue ball to go in as well. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, just a few things can happen, and all of a sudden, you can be back in a match. 8-0 down. Now 8-3. Just got to... Just got to stay patient here as Dan. Don't, don't give Jack something easy. Don't sell out. Make him work for the last rack. Like I said, if he can win the next two racks and get back to 8-5, oh, that would really spice this one up. Fortunate lead. You know, obviously Jack's using a pull cue, carbon fibre. Of course, he's not playing with his sneaky cue, so them little shots where you're playing it with a little bit of spin, he's not really got the feel yet. Top of the table. As I said before, I think the most controlled aspect of Lazowski's game in this match has been the safety. The safety he's played when he knows what to do, I think it's been pretty good. Wow, there's a gap there. I thought it was hooked. That's amazing. He needs this to spin away. Yeah, see how it's spun away from the rail? That's stopped Jack from seeing the potting angle. Are we going to see Lazowski going airborne? I think we are. He's going for the jump cue. Yeah, he's, he's okay. He's getting the ball over the object ball, is Jack. Over the years, when snooker players have played in big pool events, thinking about the likes of Steve Davis and Tony Drago who have done really, really well. Sometimes when players have pushed out, they've pushed out to a jump against a snooker player. You might not do that against Lazowski. And 
wonder if he's going to go for the bank shot or is he going to bide his time no he's biding his time that's fair enough don't blame him yeah, another example of Phil where he's played a good safety shot there There is a gap behind this ball. He can go two rails just before the right-hand middle pocket with loads of left. Cue ball off the top rail and try and kick him behind and just get distance. That's the only way he's going to stay alive in this rack. Got to make sure you hit the ball. Give him ball in hand up now where the balls, you know, there's not many balls left. left spin yeah it's okay yeah Jack can't pop this you can play a combo pink four onto the green six if you're tuning in for the first time that is allowed nine ball as long as you hit the lowest ball first another ball goes in you stay at the table yeah now Jack can you put this match to bed feels more comfortable playing with authority than dribbling. And hitting the purple five ball into the thick part of the pocket enabled him to hold on the, the seven ball easier. Now from here, he really should get the job done as he plays very easily with deep screw and reverse side. Yep, that looks like it's going to be it. It's been an interesting match. Yeah, he should, for all intents and purposes, have beaten Dan Sir. Whitewashed him 9 0, but he missed the nine ball in the ninth rack. Then Sir made a mini revival, but in the end, Jack Lazowski, on his debut in international nine ball, gets over the line. Jack Lazowski wins by nine racks to three so that's our second contest on table one of the day in the books